The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here with the Dow at uh, 8.06 a.m. Eastern Time on Friday the 18th, down 80 at 34,393. That sounds like a lot, but actually, considering the three huge uh, downside candles, and remember the Chapman Week, we'll be talking about this in my webinar coming up on uh, Wednesday uh, for subscribers. Just go to the front page and check it out. In fact, you can become a subscriber <clears throat> Listen to all the webinars. Listen to the webinar that's coming up, 90-minute webinar. It's actually a, a really a workshop. That's what I try to do just as I do every weekend for the hour-long uh, overview, the market overview that I always give, um, a video. Uh, I really try to make it educational uh, because you can do your own homework. As, as a, n a number of people have said to me, they did their own homework. That's why they were still in the short position that we had in Toll Brothers, which I had a really tight stop. And we got stopped out. And yesterday just got smashed to the downside. It's trading at 76.43 right now. We were in at about uh, 79 and then at about 80. Uh, so, yeah, it happens. So we tight stop. But... That's the way it is. I like to have the tight stops. I prefer to say, oh, coulda, woulda, shoulda, rather than saying, oh, why did I not? Uh, um, you know, whatever. So anyway, what we're looking at here is, so the Roman candle, I had said yesterday, that for yesterday's action, that if at any point we can get to, I didn't think we could, but if we did get to 35,000 and hold that for about 60 minutes, we could retest the high of, um, we could retest the high of Wednesday. Um but you had all that nine period and 14 period moving average which had just turned negative. And that just said, uh-oh, we're, we're gone from a sell signal. I call it upgrade, but it's actually a downgrade from an, uh, a sell signal to a sell mode. And that just that's just a designation. It doesn't say, oh, sell mode, you're going all the way down to 32,746. The 200 period moving average it just says that at this particular point, you've fallen enough to get that designation. You're on your way from um, uh, New York to uh, Hartford. On on the way to Boston, you've reached Hartford. That's all it says. Are you going to go to Boston? You might change your mind. Anything can happen. Okay, so with that said, let's just look at the technical indicators. We'll do this because it's Friday. It's the end of the day. It's not too much to do, at least for us. We're, we're in our positions. We're just going to have to let this play out. What we're looking at is... Um, that peak F top in the chap wave methodology, we're always alphabetizing the uppercase letters on the way up, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, D is where other things can happen. This actually went to F, the sixth highest peak at 35,679 on the 1st of August. And at that point, there were many indicators on a shorter term basis that were saying to me, wow, I know you've been talking about this 940 now, I guess I'll have to go there. I'm hoping this it ends <laughs> right now that we don't have to look at this until I start to get buy signals. And we were we were looking at this all the way from around about here, around about to the end of July, I was saying this nine period moving average over the 14 period moving average, if it doesn't immediately turn down very sharply with the price even sharper, you can have an elongated rollover that makes an arch formation, and it could be very frustrating if you're not able to pick the exact high, the exact ictus of that, that turnaround where gravity says, you're not going up, you're not going down, you're about to change trend and you've stopped dead for one second. Um, and we were very fortunate using other indicators to get the exact high on August the 1st. But look what happened. It took until August the 16th for that nine period moving average to turn pink. And there was even that huge up four, 500 point session after we had gone short. And fortunately, and this is one of the things I, I like to say, you know, there are so many, uh, you hear it on the news all the time, or the financial news all the time. Oh, you can't pick the top, you can't pick the bottom. We want to get the middle. I say middle is fantastic if you can get it, but if you're able, to get the, the lows and the highs 
it gives you some breathing room. And let me just show you something here because I've got a webinar coming up. If I don't talk about it, I mean, nobody, I mean, I have to, unfortunately, I don't want to. I've got this thing about, you know, when you take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back, that's when you hit the tree. However, I have to talk about it. We got to the low, the exact day of the low, 18,213, March of 2020. Um, we got we we got the high. I didn't actually. We got different positions in the high, but that particular high at thirty six thousand nine fifty two, we had positions that we got stopped out with tight stops, and that was a lot more difficult. Eventually, we did get a good chunk of it on the on the downside. We got the exact low in October, the day of the low, and we still have those positions. We still have the position from the diamonds. And we have the position from the diamonds and the uh, three times long from the October low. So I, I'm, I'm afraid I just have to talk about it because I don't like to, I, but I have no choice. Because how else would you even know what pertains to my webinar coming up, what techniques that I've used? So in this particular instance, what we've got is um, in the Dow, uh, and then we use the, the short and the long um, three times long, three times short positions to trade all the time that we've done on the way up. And now we're holding a short position, for the long position from uh, October. We've got the short position from August the 1st. It just gives us a cushion. That's the point I wanted to make is if you're able to use some kind of technique that gives you the ability to at least attempt to get the, the exact turn on those big flurries to the upside, or if you're short, the big flurries to the downside, they could take, I'm um, sorry, if you're long and take you out, if you get those levels, the flurries usually occur above your entry point, or in, the, in this case, on the, on the short side, the entry point short. And that just gives you a cushion. Within that, we're starting to trade. We've taken a little bit off that position. And all now I want to move on. So the, the, now I have to talk about the weekly charts. And it's Friday, so anything can happen. Already the action so far is a little bit too bullish, too early. So that's saying to me, I was saying to subscribers, if it's really ugly at the close today, and we'll see what happens if after 3 o'clock the Dow is down more than 180 points, it's going to be very ugly. So that's what I'm saying. If it holds and even turns positive intraday because it's options expiration, that kind of uses up what I thought would be Monday, where Monday could be a reversal day of some substance. So there could be maybe a 25 or even a 30% rally in the market just to fool everyone. As I mean, look at the volatility index. So you can hear that I'm talking about this today. I'm trying to give a perspective of what I'm looking at, why I'm looking at. Look, the volatility index today alone, up 3.5%, up 62 cents at 1851 hitting the 200 period moving average I've been talking about all week, yet we're not triple digit down in the Dow. S&P is only down 21. I think the, the, the fear factor has just gone a little bit too, not a little bit, quite a bit too, too excessive in the very short term. And that's why I'm thinking that I don't know what the news could be. But I'm suspecting that if we close really ugly today, Monday could be a really nice trading turnaround within the context of, at least for the daily charts, a bear phase. The weekly chart of not bear phased at all. They're still in a buy mode. They haven't really turned down. So with that said, we'll go to a break. Dow's down 90. We're going to look at the semiconductors and the home booms when I'll be here. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. And we're back. Yes, and thank you for that reminder. I, I, I didn't mention it. I kind of forgot about it because it was so long ago. The very day of the March 6th low of 2009, we got the diamonds. We held that for about 18 months at the uh, exact day. So let me just do this. I wanted to go through this because I, I needed to follow up. I did some work. Actually, what happened is I had to shut down because for some reason I, um, uh, you know, you get that white screen and there's nothing you can do. It just it is kind of like a filter that goes over it. You, just, you can click everywhere. Everything else comes up, but this particular chart you want doesn't come up. Next thing I know, all that work I did with John yesterday, we were looking at the comp index. That's the larger 2000 or something plus um, composite index for the NDX, for the NASDAQ. Um, that's not the NDX 100, which is the top 100. This is the broader uh, composite. And I lost it. I had to do it all over last night. But at the same time, what I did is just as I had done for uh, myself and then for him way back months and months ago with, with the QQQ when I was expecting in this cup formation right here. Let me just show you something. I'll do this right now. Um yeah, so the QQ, this is the weekly chart, QQQ, remember I typed this in, then I said, this is what I'm looking at, and there it is. And we were kind of over here, we were just puxing around over here at the 300 level, and I said, if I'm right about this cup formation, and I will I will touch, on. I can't do everything in 90 minutes on, on Wednesday, some of it I do all the time, so it'll be repetitive, but if I show you how these cup formations, if you identify the exact low to give you um, a plumb line with a mirror image from the left to the right, the number of bars on the left from a high to the low can equal the number of bars to the right from that low point. Or if you can't, if it just doesn't look like it's going to do it, you have to find some other candles or instruments that you're using to be able to identify a moving, a, a, a kind of a, a sliding plumb line. That's the the the, hor the vertical line that becomes your mirror image. So I had said my target is 334.42 and my outlook was that somewhere oh, if I've still got, can I still see it because I've got so many charts. My outlook was that by the oh, there it is, okay. Uh, by the, by mid-May we should try for 334. 
So that was about a 10% gain. Well, it did that, but it went right through it. So my next level was using the same, using the low of October the 14th, uh, 2023, the week of the 14th at 254.36. I had the next level, which was right here, which was uh, 371.83. Well, walking the nine period moving average, it went to uh, a week. It was, I think it was a week. Let me just click this so that I can see exactly. Oh, there it is. Oh, is that the exact, is the, is the exact week? Right there. On the 14th of July um, of this year, it went to 382.86, and then it went one bar higher, one week higher to 387.98. So I thought I'd do some work. And so um, I'm now going to have to move the weekly chart to the right and says space on the right. Let me just make it instead of uh, eight or six, make it something like 20. All right, here we go. So all of a sudden, the QQQ, what I have using – now, one of the things I tend to do – is if the plumb line looks like it's impossible because, look, the plumb line, if I made from the 4871 high on the 23rd of November, week of the 23rd of November 22, I come out to about where we are, where we were at that peak D, missing the high. You remember I said 387, what it was, 3408, it's uh, 30 points below. So that means I cannot use that as a plumb line. So then what I do is I choose an arch or a trough or a particular candle. And what I did is I, I, I moved it right to this particular point for the week of the 18th of November. And that takes me out using the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resist dash green target resistance line. It takes me to about the week of the 10th of November. Now let's see if it corresponds with the bigger picture, which is the comp index using the weekly chart. Um, thought I'd finish this. Oh, that's what I lost. Doesn't matter. I can still do it. So I want to extend this particular line right here. And I need to do it so that it bumps into highs, because otherwise, what's the point of it? And then what it does is it, it takes out the left side, right side price time match and it goes to this level here. Where is that level? Uh, around about October the 27th. That's only one aspect. Then what I need to do is I go click green. You don't have to have all these things. You can just do a line. I like to have the colors because I used to always use the black background charts. I love the colors there. They're so easy to see and you can modify them. This is so hard with a white background. However, now what I do is I grab the high of the comp index right over there. I go to that level and I say, ah, my eye says this, this, there's no way that in the next week or two we're going to go all the way to the 16,000s. So I say, okay, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the uh, with the QQQ. This is my level. This is my this is my buffer. I can go up against it, and if I do this, I can say right here, find a candle or something that you use on a regular basis. You can't make up something. It has to be one of the technical tools that you use. And then I go like this and I say, can it take you to that exact point? And it says, there it is. So that's not exactly. I want to go a little bit further. So which candle do I use? I'm going to use this peak D candle right here. And it takes me probably just a little longer. There it is. Okay, this is good. So this takes me, I think, to November. So you've got a little bit of a uh, miss, just a miss in this. This takes you to uh, about the mid-November. Mid, mid the other one was late October. So that just says to me, this is, I have no idea whether this is going to work. But I'm saying you need a digestive phase for this particular cup and handle, but of course it's not a cup and handle. You can only take it from the highs. I use a different technique. And it just says, as as soon as we start to close on a weekly basis above tw the 21st of July's high of 14,446, I can start saying, yes, my magnet line. And it should start to climb. And then what I do is I draw in another cup formation. This is, I, I might have to take this away. I don't have too, much, too many messy charts right here. And I say, that's what I'd be looking at. I can't even think of the upside 
until I know what the downside is. So let's go to the da the daily chart of the comp index. The reason why I'm doing this because the semiconductors are a big part of the comp index, and I want I'll, I, it's kind of doing two birds with one stone here. And you can see. So what I also want you to show you is that the resistance. The reason why I drew in this this narrow rectangle right here. I need to change the color, but I just put it in, is that this high, this is way back in July of 2022. Well, we are back to that level. It means that everything that you're looking at, there's no change. Of course, there's a huge change if you were at bought the bottom or you, you, you're you short or whatever it is, but we're back where we were. <laughs> so that just says this whole area here is going to be the containment area. And it could become a kind of a head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders. And lo and behold, 12,555 is going to be really important to hold. If you take that out, I might even have to extend the time that you even get to even back to where we were five minutes. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, I could do the daily, but let's go into other things. I'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So just uh, quickly, using uh, the technique of this plumb line in the complex daily, I, there's another technique that I use. If you can't go to the peak D high, you have to look either for a particular candle or the trough 
if it makes a kind of a cup formation and then fails in that dreaded H pattern, and that's exactly what it did. So this two things happened. This is the trough, and it is a tiny little doji candle, which I love. So that was the, the plumb line, and today it's actually one day early breaking that level of the low of, uh, we were talking about this yesterday, 13,334. The next one has to be a moving plumb line because now I like to always go against the, I call it the Grand Canyon this is the, the face of the mountain. So even though this is the low, I like to go right up against the very obvious last low. And I can go from that candle. And that takes me to this particular doji candle gap right there. And there's a left side, right side price time match. And that takes that's plumb line. That's the sim bar symmetry. It takes you to the 21st. That's Monday. To the... Uh, 13,089 level of the uh, 7th of June. And uh, today's low so far is 13,161, the gap down. Yeah, so the different sectors are doing things, different things right now. So what I said, uh, there were a couple of questions about uh, certain uh, stocks in the semiconductor in, uh, index or ETF. So the SMHs are down. They're actually trying to come back a little bit. They're down $1.29 to $144.29 for disclosure purposes. <clears throat> we, we are short from 159 The high all-time high was 161.17. <coughs> excuse me, on the 31st of July. We also have three times long, and we've taken little profits off now and then on the uh, – SOXS, we were talking about that yesterday. I'm a little cautious because this is only a leg seat to the downside in the SOX, um, in the in the semiconductor on the way down. And the SOXS trading right now at 11.57, and a number of people asked me, and I mentioned this the other day, where was my upside target? And I said, I'm going to only go one step at a time. And my first target when we were talking about it in the 1020s was 11.55, the high that was made back in June, that peak A minus 11.55. Well, today's high is already 11.84. I mean, we, you know, we're along from over there, uh, way down on the, uh, uh, let me just get this right so that I can get, move this in, in concert with the, the charts that are actually active right now. So yeah, so the, S, the SOXS, uh, we've been uh, we've got a long position from 898. That's kind of our core. We've taken a little bits off, but 898 to 1184. I mean, that is really a big. It's it's a gain in a shorter period of time than we could have anticipated. So I just money management says take little bits off. We took a little bit off before that day, right there when it hit 11, 11 um, before the open, and then we got back in. Uh, the very next day, early in the morning. So uh, it, it's a work in progress, just like the nine period moving average was a work in progress. But now look, this is the SOXS. The nine is sharply above, the, the price is sharply above the green nine period moving average. The nine period is sharply above the 14. The MACD is very strong. Stochastics flat at 88%. On balance volume says, hey, you're getting a little bit overbought. But the weekly chart, now you can't use this because it's uh, it gets smoothed out every day. It gets recalculated. So the weekly chart doesn't mean anything. It's just a leg A. So this is what I want you to look at. Look at NVIDIA. Gaps down. It was looking great early this morning and yesterday, but then it reversed down, and this morning was up 6 or something. Now it's down 13 at 419. Uh, here we are with the weekly chart. Rolling over at a peak G, if there's an instant restart right here, which there was, um, it could go a little higher, but I still have to circle the instant restart, which says you could go to a D. But this is also the pattern says watch out if there's an arch formation and you take out a key left side low. In this case, it would be a 399. If it takes that out on a weekly basis, I think I might have to issue for uh, NVIDIA, which is in a cell mode in the daily, I might have to issue a cell signal on the daily. I haven't got that yet. Everything is still fantastic. Look at um, advanced micro devices. Advanced micro devices made its top way back at peak F at 130. Oh, did I lose that? No, I did. I have to redo it. So I'll just tell you right now at 132, was it? Yeah, uh, 132.83. I'll just put that in 132.83. 132.83, and here it is trading 
at 104.37. That's a pretty big move to the Dow. So there's your dreaded H, should have a one-to-one, -one, and the target would be 98, and then we have to reassess. So now I want you to talk about a, cu a couple of other things because Intel lost uh, China, something or other. Um, it was looking quite good. It did a double top right there. At a peak D, at peak D, you've got to be careful. And a pullback done a one to one to the downside to the 200 period moving average of 32.36. Looking at Marvell, one of the great semiconductor companies, Marvell plunges from a peak C1, C2 high. Um, the all time high was in December of 2021 and 93.61, plunges down to the 30s, has a good rally up to the 66 area. Now it's at 57, and this is the dreaded H pattern right here in the weekly. But we have to wait for the close to say today to see if it actually closes. Well, what's going on there? It'll be there. Yeah, there it is. We'll see if it closes below the left side low of the week of the 23rd of June, 56.39. Next thing we want to look at here. Okay, so that's so those are the semiconductors. So all I can say is my my expression has always been oh for years maybe decades, where the semis go, the market tends to go as well. Um, why? Because they are the crude oil of the 21st century. That's the oil. That's what the oil that works the economy, semiconductor chips. That's just, It's as simple as that. And I think there's a little bit of a glut right now that has to be worked off. So here's another thing that's that uh, I had a, a question about. Could you just look at crude oil? Do you think it can go higher? I think that crude oil on a very short-term basis is having a bit of a rest of after a spectacular 66 in the continuous contract to the high in the 83 area, maybe 84, and now it's at uh, 70, no, now it's at, yeah, 79.59. Look at this. That's your left side, right side price time match. In this particular instance, I chose a candle because I couldn't identify the exact low, and we went from the high of the on the 12th of April uh, this is a continuous contract, so that gets smoothed out. But at that point, it's 83, uh, double top, 83.22 to 83.13, chap wave two bar reversal, comes down to that major uh, thrust to the downside in May, makes an arch formation like the lowercase h goes to a lowercase m, comes back, holds the left side low, and spirals where? So I'll, I'll, let me tell you what it is. We go to 83.22. Uh, that was back in April. And where did we go here? At this top, uh, this is the 10th of August, 84.40, within a, one and a half points. Isn't it amazing? But this has got the look of a cup and handle. So I'm not ruling out energy as a source of money coming in. I don't see a big breakout yet to the upside, but I do see it holding quite well. Look at the XLE. It's the same pattern. The peak D in the Chapman wave after the instant restart. But this is what I call um, an unconventional flat base restart, which says within the next three, four, five weeks, don't be surprised if the XLE takes out the low of 28 of 5460. It's a now. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. I was just asked if I could post the uh, SQQQ, which is the uh, three times short the QQQs and it's in leg C to the upside. It's trying to tackle this uh, ugly red bar right here. Um, there we go. On the 12th of June, the high was 2166 uh, and the low was 2066. 20, now here it is right in the middle of that particular bar. I would actually be looking at this candle right here, the candle of the 9th, um, as kind of important with the high of 2206. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, legs C to the upside. So what I was showing, uh, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, that was very nice of you. Thank you, Basil. And yes, my family is number one. Appreciate all your help. I, I, it's my pleasure. It's what I like to do. Um, okay. So within that context, a question came up about, oh, I wanted to show you this. So while we were at break, as we were going to break, I took the one-minute e-mini chart, we were right over here, right over here, just about to make a leg B. So what I did is I drew in the cup formation, I drew in the plumb line right there, that's the midpoint, the bar symmetry, and I drew it so that with this chapel wave, I'm now I'm gonna make it green, uh, inside wedge target resistance line. I'll be talking about that in my webinar. There's going to be a lot going on. And 90 minutes, I can cover a lot. I also want to do some things really thoroughly over and over. So I'll be very selective. But look at this. It said that by, based on this ca this bar right here, uh, right there, it said that by 10.45, this high right here, that I chose of uh, 43.70 could be hit. Now, if that works, and it's actually working right now because we're at 43.70.25, I can go to the high bar. So I'm going one at a time. And this time, I'm going to go to a little bit further out. And I'm going to go because there's only a leg C that should go to a D or at least double top. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, there we go. Click, click. And you, I've got these rectangles, but you can you can use anything. I'm just I like to show the colors because you can see it easier. I can see it easier. I've got the tools. Why not use it? And it says, oh, that's still quite a way to go. But it does say that by um, 1052 we should get to uh, a leg D. 
Oh, well, it is in leg D right now. So this is the kind of take. This is the same technique that I was using for the short side, for the long side. Whatever we're doing, that's what I'm using. One of the many techniques, <clears throat> plethora of techniques, but one at a time. And it just says right here at that resistance check wave, inside wedge, target resistance line. Look at that, how many times it hit it exactly. It's just, I don't know how these things work. I can understand horizontal or vertical, but diagonal, how does it get that exact angle? To my eye, that angle is about 18%. And then, boom, little doji candle says at peak D, we could start to have a deeper pullback, but the nine period moving average is still good. The MACD is good, a little bit overbought. And the, the um, stochastic's flat at 91%, so that still shows some strength. All right, those are the techniques I like to use. We had a little lesson right there. Now, I want you to go back here. Um, look at this. HGX, with tears in my eyes. Um, I spoke about this I, in my overview on the weekend, last weekend. I said, this is ready to go. I had an, e uh, an email uh, that said, if I can actually find it. Uh, that said, uh, probably I'm not going to find it. Mm. Oh. Um. Oh, there it is. Uh, right there it says, uh, Basil, you sure were right about your house, house builders being susceptible to rates. Of course, I had a big short in the sector and I lost patience to hold it. Wow, what a miss. You know, it's a miss, but it's telling us something. So maybe you won't get the same impact and now you, your risk to get in is going to be a little harder. But this is telling me, based on the uh, alternate count that I have in the weekly chart, the HDX index, also based on the um, looking out, I have to say, it's a leg C in the monthly chart. It's probably a peak C this month. But it should still go to a D, okay, because it's got the Chan wave overlapping wave to leg D. That's what I've written in there. But if you look at the look BLDR, I spent a bunch of time on this in the show here last week, I think, or well, weeks for weeks I've been talking about it. Builders first source ink, building materials, manufacturers, uh, uh, components, and leg C in the monthly chart, BLDRS. Look what happened. It made this high. And the CEO, I actually had him here, quoted on the 15th, how everything was just, everything is construct uh, in construction. Uh, I'm sure i make that, I'll make it bigger. <laughs> here we go. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Let's make it 14 so I can actually read it. And he said, the CEO with Kramer he says, uh, in everything in construction, better shape than last year, huge earnings beat, no full year forecast, uh, General uncertainty, massive earnings reports, sales slowing, recession was not here. Numbers with mortgage rates are high, and they take so uh, take a little bit off, but long-term beat numbers. And it was really uh, mostly very favorably inclined that he's the CEO, I should hope so. But he wasn't. He was mentioning the negatives. And I said to myself, I like to do this because we had Toll Brothers way back in 2007, I believe it was, um, here in the den and and, men, and Tom and I, we were all looking at where the home builders were going to tank. And eventually when they did, they gave big, big, nice numbers. But while in the interim, you just had to have really tight stops because it was buying that kept coming in. So here's the dreaded H pattern. And that, I thought I'd put that in, which fails at a peak A or B. And if it takes out the left side low, it can go more than one to one to the downside. That's exactly what it did. And it plunged yesterday. It's trading at what it hit the low today of 128.33. It had a high of 156.84 back in the beginning of August. That says to me that. Absolutely, there's going to be time, and that if we're getting a rollover now of the different sectors, it's going to put a cap on the upside for uh, the general market until you get everything flowing back again. So that just says in, in areas like Lenar, Toll Brothers, yes, Lenar, look at this big move. 103.24 was the high in July. Here it is at 115, 16 points lower. Uh, is that right? Uh, 18 points lower. Uh, and I'm really close to giving a sell signal on the, on the weekly chart. So I'm saying uh, that you might have missed that exact turn, but any really strong rally 
says to me, even though the, oh, here we go again. So you see Lenoir, you see this nine period over the 14 in the weekly chart. Let's go to our chart right here. Let's go to uh, Toll Brothers and Lenoir. Let's just put LN, L-E-N, since I'm talking about it. That always reminds me of Len, who used to be in the den. Uh, unbelievable. Bought the real estate at and the lows of uh, way back and then in 2007 started to sell and then bought the, some of those houses back at the very low prices that he had bought them before land in Cape Coral. Um, I, we, we wish one another a season's greetings at the end of the year. Haven't spoken to him for a long time. But look at this. Lenar, weekly chart. Well, I've never got another segment. Look, the weekly chart is still holding. Look at Toll. Weekly chart is still fantastic. Look at HGX. I'll be right back. Down is down 40. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So let me just do a quick summation. So this went to a peak E, the one-minute chart right there under the previous sign. Now it's pulling back in the one-minute chart. So let me just say, if after 3 o'clock this afternoon, the S&P is under 43, oh, I'd say 43.48. It's going to be a really ugly close, and then Monday could be maybe a climactic low for the shorter term, just, just I'm saying. 
But if, in fact, there's a rally later on, because it's options expiration day, and there's a rally and the Dow after 310 this afternoon is actually up about 30 or 40 points, it's only down 44 right now, um, that kind of dissipates some of that intense selling and just it, 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 this just lingers and goes on. And um, so let me just quickly go through this as we're about to wrap up because you're going to go to Steve Rose. Great program, rest of the day. But let me just say that... Um, so in the outlook that I have at this particular point, those weekly charts, today's close is going to be able to say to me, where are you on the weekly charts? Have you even got a sell signal yet? Is this going to be just a short-term aberration in terms of the, 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 the mood gets so negative so quickly? You saw that in the VIX index that it just all dissipates and it's just a series of low lows and lower highs. Or we're going to make some kind of a turn coming up. Well, I think you can't exclude the TLT. The TLT is going towards the left side. This is the bonds. 91.85 low of October. It's already been to 90, uh, 93.02 level. I mean, it's so close. So this is a very, very important moment. Crude oil, as I said, is held well. But it looks like it's, it's, uh, it could pull back. Um, a very important moment. So those are the levels I'm I'm looking at. And let's just go with the SMHs. As I wrap it up here, check out my opening call. Check out my webinar coming up for subscribers on Wednesday afternoon. And the SMHs um, must hold 142 in the next day or two. Have a great rest of the day. I'll be back. Um, see you on Monday.